Worldwide mask usage is at an all-time high, obviously. But what is the impact on your eyes? In today's video, we're going to talk about it. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hello, I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. On this channel, I post educational videos about eye health and vision products. If you're new here, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell so you never miss a video. I'm gonna leave some helpful information down in the notes below. I'll leave you my sources and some helpful links and you can check those out at any time during this video. All right, so today we're gonna talk all about masks. Obviously, we're all wearing masks a whole lot more and I'm gonna tell you about three eye-related conditions that they can cause. Okay, my pupils, it is time for virtual learning eye school. So concern for decreasing transmission of the COVID-19 virus, the coronavirus, has led us all to wear masks a whole lot more. But since this pandemic has started and the whole world has started wearing masks, eye doctors have noticed the increase in a couple of different eye conditions. The first of these conditions is called mask-associated dry eye, or MAID. This was first recognized in a journal of ophthalmology, which I'll link down below, back in July. I can tell you as a practicing clinician that I have absolutely seen the signs and symptoms of dry eye increase in my clinical experience as well. So mask-associated dry eye basically occurs when a person is wearing a mask that's not fitted completely to their nose. It's gonna be more common in your fabric masks, much like this one right here, especially because it doesn't have like a little metal thingy that you can fit to the bridge of your nose. Um, basically what happens is as you breathe, that air is forced upward by the mask directly towards your eyes and you end up with this stream of air in your eyes, which increases symptoms of dry eye. I've treated dry eye for a long time and I can tell you one of the first things I tell my dry eye patients is to avoid blowing air. That means don't sleep under a fan at night. Um, when you're driving in the car, turn those air vents away from you. And anyone with dry eye will tell you that moving air, blowing air is just very difficult on their eyes. It's, I was gonna call it murder. <laughs> murder. <laughs> anyone with dry eye will tell you that air blowing on their eyes greatly increases their signs and symptoms and not in a good way, not in a greatly way, in a really bad way. So that is what we're seeing. We're seeing the folks that, especially the folks that have to wear a mask all day long and are choosing to wear one like this one, that air is flowing upward and causing an increase in dryness. So what can you do about it? If you have to wear a mask, and many of us do, there are a few things you can do to reduce your symptoms of dryness. The first is choose a different sort of mask. There are plenty of masks out there with a metal piece across the nose. If you're making your own masks, I believe you can put a little piece of paper clip in there or a pipe cleaner and then really fit it down nicely around your nose. What that will do is reduce the amount of airflow that goes upward towards your eyes and causes your symptoms of dryness. The second thing you can do is to proactively use artificial tears throughout your day. Instead of waiting for your eyes to feel dry, you know wearing a mask they're gonna be a little more prone to dryness, so go ahead and throw a preservative-free artificial tear in your eyes throughout your day. The final thing you can do is to control your environment as much as possible. We know that environments with blowing air, air-conditioned, very dry environments, cause dryness to be worse. And so if you're at all able, if you're working from home, you have control over that environment, turn your AC down, maybe get a humidifier and keep that air moisturized in your vicinity. Another one that I just thought of right now, drink lots of water. If you stay hydrated, your eyes will be more hydrated as well. Okay, so the first one I talked about, MAID, or mask-associated dry eye, that's the only one that's actually backed by an observational 
study that was put in one of the journals of ophthalmology. That's really the only published finding around masks and eye-related conditions. The second two conditions I'm gonna to talk to you about now are just personal observations that are actually being seen by others in my field. I've talked to colleagues about this. They're seeing an increased risk as well, an increased incidence in their clinics. I haven't run the codes through my system to see if they've occurred more truly by the numbers, but I can tell you that since people started wearing masks more, we are seeing a lot more hordeolums. Now the common name for a hordeolum is called a sty. Most people know what a sty is. It's an infection within one of the glands of the eyelid. Now there are external hordeolums and internal hordeolums, and I've seen an increase in the incidence of both of these. I've seen it happen in male patients, female patients, and children in my clinic. An informal um, poll that was done on one of the optometry um, Facebook groups, there was a conversation being had that they noticed women were having more styes and they were you know, putting out theories as to could that be because of makeup use or less makeup use and so therefore less um, cleaning off of makeup thoroughly at night and maybe that's contributing to increase in styes in women. But I can tell you in my clinic, I'm seeing it in children, men, and women. Across the board, I have seen so many more styes or hordeolums than I've ever seen in the past. Now these are thankfully easily treated. You're gonna to wanna to use a warm compress um, and I would definitely see your doctor because prompt treatment of a hordeolum ensures that it doesn't turn into the next thing I'm gonna to talk to you about, which is a chalazian. Chalazian. <laughs> A chalazion simply occurs when a sty resolves, when the bacterial infection associated with a sty resolves, okay? And then you're left with inflammatory debris within that gland. And over time, that inflammatory debris can harden and you'll have kind of a permanent lump or bump on your eyelid. So when I treat a hordeolum or a sty, I'm trying to get that thing gone and reduced in size as quickly as possible. So I'm pretty fast and hard with my treatment. I do topical antibiotics, potentially oral antibiotics, and heat like crazy to begin with. That ensures that we don't end up with a chalazion, which are much harder to get rid of. All right, I'm gonna give you some tips now because you're gonna have to wear masks for the foreseeable future. That's just the time we're living in. So um, tip number one, Get a mask that's easily formed around your nose. That's gonna reduce airflow up toward your eyes and hopefully keep you from having those dry symptoms that are so miserable. The second is to increase your, your use of artificial tears. So don't wait for your eyes to feel terrible, but get used to using them proactively. Use those tears before you feel grittiness or sandiness of your eyes because that'll keep your eyes nice and lubricated and you'll be much more comfortable. The next is warm compresses. Warm compresses are pretty much always your friend when it comes to your eyes. You can use them if you have a sty coming on. Um, you can use them at night for 10 to 15 minutes to kind of get those glands in your eyelids nice and warm and gooey and ensure that that oil moves like it's supposed to. I've made so many videos about this. I think we should just kind of like link them up above in succession, but I've talked about Bruder on many occasions. These warm compresses are so, so helpful. And having a nighttime routine, um, that's my next tip is to clean your eyelids. And you can check out my nighttime eye routine um, because that'll be really helpful. And I would absolutely recommend that right now to keep you from having eye problems. And then finally, um, when it's time to call the eye doctor, I think as soon as you have a sty, you should check in with your eye doctor. Like I said, because it's better to get rid of it right away than to let it kind of simmer on its own. If you let it simmer, you could end up with A, a chalazion, if it does get better and you just have the inflammatory debris. That's the better of the two scenarios. The worse of the two is that the infection spreads to your whole eyelid and causes a preceptal cellulitis. You don't want that. You'll have to be on oral antibiotics at that point. And that can even spread into an orbital cellulitis. If it passes the septum, which is kind of the um, 
safeguard between your eye and your brain. If you had an infection that were to pass the septum, you could actually have an orbital cellulitis, and that's something you have to be hospitalized for. So when it comes to hordeolums, get into your eye doctor and just get that thing gone. There's no reason to just pff, try this and try that and over-the-counter this. My opinion is, and I'm very clearly biased, but I'd rather just take care of it for you. And finally, I want to say too that I wholeheartedly am behind the use of masks as a public health measure at this point. We're in the midst of a pandemic. It's so very important that you continue to wear masks. My position here is to just tell you about some of the eye-related conditions I've been seeing more often in my clinic, and then some simple ways that you can prevent these from happening to you. But it's still so very important. Wear your masks, social distance, and be kind wash your hands, and take care of one another. <laughs> Thank you as always for tuning in. We love having you here on this channel with us. We post videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. now. So make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me some comments down below. If you're an eye doctor, have you seen these same eye conditions? If you're a patient, have you had one of these eye conditions? I'd love to hear from you. Till then, I'll see you next time.